Welcome to our virtual senior presentation evening. I hope you enjoy the evening and can celebrate our students' achievements with us. Hello everyone, my name's Julian White and I'm the Chair of Governors here at QEHS. Well, what a year it's been. I'd like to send a huge well done to all of our students. It cannot have been easy to go through the uncertainty of the last 10 months. It'll be interesting to see what greets us for the remainder of this academic year and beyond. So can I offer my sincere congratulations to those of you who have won prizes this year and shown great re resilience and determination in spite of these difficult times. As governors, we have been hugely encouraged by the reports of those of you offering your support to fellow students this term. This thoughtful and caring approach is noticed, it matters, and will stand you in good stead for the future. I'd like to pay tribute to all staff in school who, like you, have had to adapt to new ways of working, often with very little notice. But in particular, a big thank you to the sixth form team who I know will stop at nothing to improve your experiences at QEHS. Finally, I want to thank our head teacher, David Alsop, who will be leaving the school at the end of December. For 11 years, David has worked tirelessly to create a safe, vibrant and challenging environment to ensure that children arriving on day one of year seven leave the school as well-rounded, articulate young adults able to tackle the next stage of their learning. So congratulations again and on behalf of all the governing body, can I wish you and your families a peaceful and happy Christmas. And whether you're still in school or have left us for ventures new, I hope that 2021 brings you great joy and success. Welcome to this, our second virtual prize giving evening, this time for the seniors. Whilst this is obviously not as good as a all meeting in the hall to celebrate the achievements of the students that we are um, giving prizes to this evening, we really can't let an event like this pass by without giving those students the credit they deserve. So huge congratulations from me for every single student who's receiving a prize virtually this evening. Now you will receive your prize in reality and we'll find a way to do that over the next few weeks before Christmas. So you keep an eye on your emails and your tutor notices for how that's gonna happen. Um, so that you can see the cups that you've won, get your certificates and get your book tokens. Now the topic at the moment is of course, schools being fully open during a global pandemic, during a second uh, wave of coronavirus in the country and also during a second national lockdown. However, I think we need to see beyond that. During my time as leader of this amazing school, I have come up with many mantras and sayings that have helped me in my decision making uh, for, for, for all that time. One of them is control what you can control, influence what you can influence, and don't waste time and effort worrying about the things that are completely out of your control. So. The fact that schools are open is a national decision, reiterated time and time again by ministers and reiterated as well in a recent letter on the 14th of November to uh, from the ministers to public health officials that schools must remain open. So let's not worry about that, whatever we think about that particular thing, and by the way, I am pleased to have Queen Elizabeth High School open for all of our students, but we can't control it. What we can do though is influence and control those things that are within our grasp, that are within our gift. Now, before we go on to those, Mahatma Gandhi said that we should live as though we would, sorry, learn as though we would live forever. And I think that's a great way to think about it. So thinking about the past academic year, I want to think about what we might have learned through that period um, and how we can then make it better afterwards, that longer view, rather than concentrating on what's going on now. 
We've been back in school for almost two uh, full terms. Uh, and by the time you watch this, it might well be two full terms. And I think the lockdown and before the summer really taught us how much we miss being in school and in particular what it is about school that we miss. The phrase absence makes the heart grow fonder springs to mind. Now I wanted to find out where that came from and I thought it'd be a Shakespearean thing but actually although it's alluded to in various different documents right from the, the 1600s the first actual quotation was in the 1840s by a poet called Thomas Bailey. And he said in a longer poem, in the verse where this appears, What would not I give to wander, where my old companions dwell? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Isle of beauty, fare thee well. That's so pertinent to where we are now. If you replace Quillers with High School instead of Isle of Beauty, despite the fact it doesn't scan very well, that's exactly how we felt. Having missed school for all that time, coming back was so important to us all. And I believe we are fortunate to be able to be back in school. We're back in our Isle of Beauty and we don't have to put up with that absence anymore. Now, a member of staff once said to me that outstanding teaching can be encapsulated in two words, confidence and relationships. And it's the relationships bit which you can't be done through Google Classroom and can't be done online. The magic of learning can't be done via a screen, via Google. It's a lived human experience that happens every day in our classrooms in this school. It's what education is and it's why we need to keep schools open to allow that process to continue to happen every day for every child, irrespective of their background or context and it really has been lovely to see that process rekindled at the start of this academic year. Some of the students here this evening have lived through the angst of getting their centre assessed grades and the worry of not knowing what will happen next year and the whole debacle that we went through in the summer. Thankfully, I know that many of you ended up where you wanted to be or at least on a course that was similar to the course you wanted to do in a similar part of the country. However, those feelings of anxiety that we all felt that were very, very real and I really did feel them with all of you at the time. We need to remember those feelings and we need to do everything we can to avoid such a situation happening again. Go back to my mantra, control what you can control, influence what you can influence. Don't worry about what you can't control. So we can control the level of engagement we put into our studies. We can control our mental attitude towards those studies. We can control our feelings of self-confidence. We can control whether we do the work that we're asked to do by our teachers. We can influence those around us to support us in our learning aims. We can influence the teachers by working with them, not against them. And we can influence our wider community of friends by making them aware of what we are trying to do. What we can't control is what will be on the exam paper. We can't control what might happen with regards to COVID-19. So let's not waste time worrying about what's going to be on the exam. Assume everything is going to be on the exam because you can't actually do anything about it. Control what you can control, influence what you can influence. Put all your efforts into that and don't worry about those other things. Now, I think this speech is my last ever speech as head teacher at Queen Elizabeth High School. Since 2009, I've done 22 speech nights and each one has been a joy and is something that I will really, really miss. I've done speeches at open evenings and various other things. And it's lovely at junior speech night to see those students who are rising stars in the school um, in their early years of time here and that you start to see those rising stars coming through. And of course, here at Senior Speech Night, I get to see those students who have left us to go on to other things return as young adults. We really do see at these speech nights that transition from childhood when you come into school to young adulthood, adulthood when you leave. Now I think, and still do and always have, that a signature means something. Which is why, instead of having my signature printed on the certificates, 
At every single one of those 22 speech nights, I have signed every single certificate individually over the past years. Signing them this year made me realise how much I'm really going to miss being able to talk to you, the returning students who've gone off to university and other things, uh, to see how you're getting on. I've shared a stage, well, as I was reading the names, I realised I've shared a stage with many of you, we've been to China with some of you, I've enjoyed political debates, sometimes very heated, where we could disagree, but we disagreed agreeably, rather than disagreeing disagreeably, which is what you sometimes see on television nowadays. I've had some fascinating conversations with you about physics, about RE, about philosophy, in fact, a whole range of topics with so many of you as I've read those names on those certificates. And I genuinely, genuinely hope that you are enjoying where you are now and you remember QHS with some fondness. In fact, being part of that growth and development of young people from children to adults is what makes this an incredibly special career in teaching. And it's been an honour and a privilege to have been just a small part of so many of your paths to where you find yourselves now. However, we all need to move forwards and I'm looking forward to the next set of challenges that come my way. Being the head teacher of Queen Elizabeth High School has been a genuine honour and a privilege and I have so many happy memories of the past 11 and a half years. The school will continue to go from strength to strength and any head teacher is only the current custodian of the school. The school is the thing that will endure and it will, I hope and expect, always be here for past students, the current students and for those students who are still at primary school who will be the future students of Queen Elizabeth's High School. It will always be there for all of those people. So, I should leave you again with that great advice from Gandhi. Learn like you will live forever. Enjoy the rest of this speech night. Thank you very much for everything you've given to me as head teacher at the high school. Good luck and thank you. Bye bye. and um, looking forward to the Christmas break and for those of you not celebrating Christmas then I hope you're looking forward to some time out it's it's definitely been a bit of a year so I think we could all do with it um, so to start with I obviously just wanted to say a huge congratulations to everyone that's receiving a prize that's such a fantastic achievement so I hope you're feeling very proud of yourselves and celebrating um, so I know some of you may have tuned into a uh, junior presentation evening uh, earlier this year, but for those of you that didn't, uh, I should probably also start by introducing myself. So my name's Rebecca and uh, I work as a professional actor and, and singer and I went to Queen Elizabeth's between 2002 to 2009. Uh, so after leaving school, I went on to train at drama school at both uh, the Central School of Speech and Drama and Mount View Academy of Theatre Arts. Um, they're two of some of the, the top drama schools in Europe, so I was very, very lucky. Um, and uh, a little bit about my career, I suppose. Uh, when I graduated, I went on to play uh, Little Voice in the Rise and Fall of Little Voice. Um, I then went on to the International Tour of the Sound of Music, uh, which was was the transfer from the London Palladium. Uh, I was understudying Maria and also in the ensemble, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, after that, I joined the cast of The Railway Children in uh, the West End. It was this amazing uh, thousand seater theatre with a, a real steam train, real train tracks, so the train rode through the centre of the auditorium during the show, which was very cool. Um, and I, again, understudied the, the main roles of uh, Roberta and Phyllis, as well as being in the ensemble. And I got to go on quite a lot for those those two parts as well, which was very, very fun. Um, so after leaving that job, I did a little bit of filming for a company called Supermassive Games. I filmed a role for their most recent fil uh, film, uh, most recent game, video game uh, called Little Hope, uh, which has got Will Poulter in it. And that was definitely a lot of fun filming that. Uh, and then my most recent job, I've been uh, doing my best 
Rachel Green impersonation uh, for Friends um, parody tour, which has just transferred over from the US. Um, obviously, we, we got shut down early due to lockdown, um, but we are due to be back, fingers crossed, next year. So uh, I believe we are booked in for some venues in and around Lincolnshire. So if any of you are Friends fans and uh, want to come and watch, please do. And please come and say hello after if you do. Um, that would be really lovely to meet some fellow Queen Elizabeth students. Um, so uh, I've also worked as a professional singer. Um, I've sang as a backing vocalist for Katie Melua and Alfie Bow. Uh, I've also sang with the band Belvoir, who were on The Voice last year in uh, Ollie Merz's team. Um, and I've sang at uh, venues, kind of really exciting venues around, uh, around the country. Um, some of my favourites have been the Royal Albert Hall, uh, the Natural History Museum. Uh, I've done a number of gigs at, at Quaglino's, which is a very well-known jazz bar in Mayfair. So I've, I've been really lucky to have a, a very fun career. Um, but uh, it's it's been hard work and not all glamorous uh, all the time. I think a lot of people think that making it as an actor is sort of uh, becoming famous or uh, being a celebrity. And whilst, of course, you know, if you kind of reach that level, you know, that's great. Um, but it is actually only reflective of a tiny part of the industry. There, There is a whole world of jobbing actors out there who work in the West End, in regional theatres, international theatres, on your television screens and cinema screens, um, you know, who wouldn't necessarily be recognised generally, unless you're kind of an avid theatre fan, uh, but are nonetheless, you know, very successful, well-respected professionals. Um, I would say actually a lot of the time the people who are kind of top of their game in that world are probably more respected um, within the industry than many well-known celebrities are. Um, so there is this whole world of exciting work that <clears throat> certainly I've learned about after after leaving school. Um, but like I say, on, on the other hand, it is quite a hard career. Um, they say that uh, kind of about 90% of actors at any one time are out of work. So uh, I've definitely had to learn to uh, be multi-skilled and open to other opportunities. And so I've done my fair share of other, other jobs as well. Um, and of course, including things like bar work, nannying, front of a house at theatres. Uh, I had a very unusual job jumping out of a wheelie bin in East London um, when I first graduated, <laughs> which was part of an interactive dining experience to launch a new Nokia phone. And I, yeah, it wasn't my finest sort of experience of uh, leaving drama school and wondering what life would be like as an actor, but uh, it's given me a good story to tell. Um, but, you know, some of the jobs I found myself in, I really enjoyed and, um, you know, never really thought I'd end up doing that or, or really knew about those jobs. Um, and I guess the message I wanted to pass on is that as you kind of reach this later stage in school, I think there can be a bit of a, a pressure to sort of know what it is you want to do now and, and know how you're going to do it. You know, what's your journey? And, and that's quite daunting, especially because you only typically hear about a handful of careers when you're at school, you know. Uh, being a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, a, a vet, you know, um, which is understandable because there's not the time to, to teach you about every possible career. Um, but I think, you know, I guess what I wanted to pass on is, is that there's so many jobs out there that you won't have heard of yet that will find you along the way and you might find you enjoy and there's just no way you can predict your, your path. So, so don't worry too much, just enjoy, you know, focus on the things that you want to do that you enjoy at the minute, you know, um, the things you're interested in, the things you're good at, take it one step at a time. And I think, things will fall into place and um, you you know you might surprise yourself actually at where where you end up um, I, I firmly believe that's what meant what's meant to be will be uh, I you know didn't get into drama school the first year I applied there's been so many auditions that I've not got and then actually I sort of got a job that I wanted even more and so I think everything works itself out in the end so just don't worry too much looking too far ahead um, I also wanted to pass on that I know that school can be a bit of a tricky time for some people. Um, for some of you watching, it might not have been. You might be having an amazing time at school and have amazing friendships, and that is so special, so hold on to that. Um, but really, for anybody watching that maybe has had a little bit of a bumpier journey, I, I wanted to say that I did, 
too. Um, I didn't have the best of times. I had trouble with friendships um, and had some really tough times. But um, kind of looking back, I still think that was a really amazing point in my life that I had the opportunity to figure myself out, figure what I was interested in, what subjects I was good at. And, you know, I loved my art lessons when I was at school. Um, Ms Muir, who I know is still at the school now, she was a huge part of my time at school. I, I always looked forward to my classes with her. I, I would often disappear to the art rooms in my free time as well. It was a real safe haven for me. And she she really inspired me um, and kind of made me realise that I wanted to do something creative and that I should just go for it. And, and that was really special. So um, I guess, you know, whilst I, I hope that you're all watching and having a brilliant time at school, if any of you aren't, I just wanted to say, keep going. It does get better. Um, there's so much exciting things, so many exciting things that await you. Um, but don't wish this time away. It's it's still an amazing time for you. So just make the most of the subjects you love and taking in as much learning as you can. Um, so I've probably been rambling on quite a while now, but to round off with a, with a message again that I wanted to pass on, uh, there's only one of you and nobody else can offer what you can offer to people. And you have to believe in yourself and then people will believe in you. And you should be really proud of yourselves this evening because clearly already you're doing so well. So when you face challenges later in life, if you do, you're going to have the tools that you need to tackle them. And I think just keep focusing on the important things in life. Um, you know, it is obviously important to work hard, but be kind on yourself. Don't worry too much, too far ahead. Um, just take every step as it comes. And as cheesy as it sounds, you know, the journey is just as important as the destination. So um, just enjoy where you're at now. Um, so if, if any of you were interested in the arts, um, I have said to the school, I'd be more than happy for my details to be passed on uh, and pass on any advice that I can give. Um, also, if you're applying for drama schools, please let me know if you would like any um, additional support because I do also um, tutor privately, so I would be happy, happy to help, but uh, I'm not going to <laughs> pitch myself here for that. Um, so just to uh, round up to say, you know, I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas and, uh, you know, wishing you all the best of luck with your futures and uh, congratulations once again. Congratulations go to the following students for their outstanding GCSE results. Mohsen Al Sifi, Ashley Mbeju Panous, Amelia Bullis, Natasha Byers, Anna Chapman, Ptolemy Chapman, Max Coop, Evan Dickinson, Lucy Hurst, Edward Hunt, Taylor Lloyd, Harvey Lee Longstaff, and Jane Marples. Minar Hill Mahmood, Agatha Nadalinska, Adez Obiecki, Alexandra Park, Bethan Scott, Ramiz Sheikh, Joel Sony, Simran Upal, Katie Vaughan, Arwen Williams, Holly Wilson and Connor Wilson McPherson. Lizzie here, I hope you're all keeping safe. I'm going to perform Cute Boys with Short Haircuts from the musical Vanities. Seems like one of those, where did I go 
wrong days Can't stop crying and I guess I'm not so strong days Lost the only guy I ever had It's been one of those feels like I've been scarred years Can't get out of bed and life is kinda hard years No one ever made me feel so sad Now all I see are cute boys with short haircuts Congratulations goes to the following students for their outstanding work in Year 12. Charlotte Betts, Ruth Briscoe, Stephanie Burton, Georgina Carberry, Sarah Dancy, Ben Dixon, Ellie Driver, Erin Green, Hannah Harper, Jessica Helly, Ben Jalihal, Tyler Jarman, Devon King, Ava Lane, Chloe Metcalf, Lauren Miller, Josh Myers, Thomas Palaza, Sarah Percival, Isaac Powell, Abaron Prathaban, Rayhan Rahman, Georgina Rhodes, Amelia Sakalariu, Anna Salim, Mia Shipley, Isabel Southwick and Ali Sultanzada. Well done.
Congratulations goes to the following students for their outstanding work in Year 13. Naya Barfin, Eve Bailey, Tilly Bedford, Isabel Bingley, Francis Butroyd, Jake Caldwell, Helena Klempner, Joe Compte, Holly Credland, Elliot Crow, Rena DeSanth, Harry Doughty, Boris Gavin, Faye Godley, Jonathan Graham, Elizabeth Hagen, Emily Hansen, Josh Highlands, Harry G, Harry Melling, Audra Morris, Eve Sane, Sean Saunders, Nathaniel Sims, James Smith, Byron Wandera, Eddie Warner, Georgia White.
A huge congratulations to all of the students that have been awarded a prize this evening. Your resilience and effort, especially through this past year, has been incredible and you should all be extremely proud of your achievements. This year has been extremely challenging for ourselves. Closed schools, online learning, exams cancelled and even the arrival of bubbles. Despite all these challenges, we feel that you have shown real strength of character resilience in how you're pushing through in these trying times in carrying on with your studies and strength of purpose in still striving for personal excellence. We would like to give a special thanks to all of our returning students who are now beginning their lives at university and other pastures new. We hope that even during this less than ordinary term you have been able to settle in well and are enjoying your independence. We are sure that you are well equipped for the years ahead and wish you the best of success long into the future. Thank you, Rebecca, for coming to speak to us this evening. Your life in the arts has highlighted what someone can achieve when they aim high and never give up. Your journey is inspiring and we're sure that our talented young musicians and actors here this evening will take great confidence that they too can have a career as successful and fulfilling as yours. Thank you to all of the parents, guardians and staff for joining us this evening. We are all extremely grateful for your continued support and guidance without which none of the students would be here tonight. And we must also express our gratitude to the IT team, without which this and all of our other virtual events simply would not be possible. And finally, in lockdown I read, people who go far in life don't just stop when they achieve their dream, they dream another. This really stuck with me and I'm going to carry this forward. I invite you all to join me in doing the same. We need to remember that for every success, there's another step forward and it's up to all of us to take that next step. 
Thank you again to everyone. We wish you all the best for the festive season ahead and a very happy new year.